Hello everybody and welcome to this video on single table inheritance. I have just had too much lattes and so I'm super pumped, full of caffeine, ready to give you guys some awesome information. All right, so first thing we're going to do is double click on advanced relationship queries, control D and create our new component for this video and it will be called single table, whoop, accidentally hit the caps key, inheritance. There we go, so let's double click on that, go copy, save this file, new file into our components, whack it in there, dot view, whack in our normal template and put a div in there. And we'll just say single table inheritance and check if it works. So we'll have to go npm run serve. Do, 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 do. All right, control click that. And there we go, it looks like everything is working, no errors, awesome. Now, hopefully you watched the previous video and you'll know that we're going to have to build a few more classes. But first, let's jump onto the user class. And if I come down here, uh, we're gonna have a couple of functions on here. And the first one is going to be post. Okay, because all users are going to be able to, uh, going to, be able to post. So we'll say console.log um, making a post. We're just gonna like uh, mock all of this for now. Login. And then a user will be able to log in as well. So you might like pass through the credentials so that they can log in. Um, logging in, something like that. Cool, so they're the methods for our user. Let's jump onto the publisher class. Oh, we're gonna have to create the publisher class. Um, and to do that, we'll just duplicate list. And let's call this publisher.js. All right, cool. So we can get rid of pretty much all of this. In fact, we can get rid of all of that. Um, we're going to have to import the user, but not the model because this is going to extend the user. So instead of extending model, we're going to extend user now. So let's go ahead and do that. Extend user. And this is called publisher. The entity will be called publishers. And now one thing that we need to add here is the base entity. So this will be the original entity name on that original class, okay? So in this case, it is users. So let's go back, static base entity will be equal to users. And now we wanna grab the fields from the user class. And to do that, we say dot, 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 super. So that's basically grabbing the user class when we call super dot fields. All right, so we're calling fields on the user class. Save that, duplicate it, and let's create our admin. Admin.js, change publisher to admin, publishers to admins, and I think that's all we have to do. Uh, yep, that looks good to me. Let's duplicate this and call it super admin. And now we change that to super admin and change this to super admins. And once again, the base entity is going to stay the same. Oh, but instead of importing user there, we're importing admin because remember super admin will extend the admin class. We wanted to see if we were able to do this and I think it actually will work. Well, I know it will work because I already tested it behind the scenes. <laughs> there we go. And notice that the base entity is still users. The base entity here is not admins. Base entity needs to be that original class, okay? Which is why it comes from the original class, which is why it's users. Save that, and now let's register these classes. We'll go to store.js, scroll up, uh, copy down three times, and what are we going to call this? This will be publisher, this will be admin, and this will be super admin. Awesome. Now I can alt click these. So if you double click on publisher and alt double click admin, alt double click super admin, control C, now I can do something fancy, check this out. Now I can shift alt and then press down, then say database dot register and then paste all of them in at the same time. So just a bit of Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code magic there. So there we go, they're all registered. Now let's just open up uh, the browser and we're getting a couple of warnings here. Don't worry, we're going to address those warnings later on. So let's see if we can actually create one of these publishers now. So let's go into that uh, component we created. Import publisher from dot dot slash classes slash publisher. And then when this is mounted, let's go ahead and insert a publisher. Put a comma in there. 
publisher.insert data. And let's give the publisher an ID equal to one. Let's give them a first name equal to Luke. And I think that will do. Actually, let's make it Aaron. I want to be an admin. Ha <laughs> ha. And now to check if this is working, we can say console.log publisher.all and we'll just grab uh, the first publisher. There we go. Let's see if that worked. And there we go. We've got this publisher class, which is basically just a user under the hood. So we have all of the fields that a user has. How cool is that? Now, another thing we can check is that the method on publisher works. So let's go back to publisher here. And that method, oh, we didn't actually end up adding the method. So it has a method called verify post. Console.log verifying the post. So we're just doing dummy stuff for now. Um, and let's actually, while we're at it, let's go to admin and add a method for the admin called delete account. So you'll remember this from the previous video, console.log deleting the account. And then we also want to go to super admin and give them one called delete server. So delete server console.log deleting the server. Cool, save that. Now let's go back into our single table inheritance view component. And now let's see if we can call dot verify post and see if that works. There we go, verifying the post, it works. However, if we try doing one of those things that the admin can do, so let's go to admin, uh, it should not be able to delete an account. So let's see if that works. No, it does not, which is good. We do not want a publisher to be able to delete an account. They don't have that function. Now this is cool, but let's just imagine we get a request with a whole bunch of users. Some of those users are publishers. Some of those users are super admins. And what do we do about that? How do we deal with all that data and create the appropriate classes? So we wanna be able to go user.insert and then insert all of the right kinds of classes. And in order to do that, we're going to need to use a type field here. So did we actually, did we implement that? I don't think we did. No, okay, so we're going to have to put a new field on the user table called type. This dot attribute, and by default, let's just set that to user. So they're going to be the type of user by default. And now this user here is going to be a publisher. So we'll put in publisher. And now we need to tell Vuke's ORM that if the type is equal to publisher, I want you to build a publisher class, all right? So if the type is equal to publisher, go ahead and build me a publisher class, oops. Yeah, so let's jump into user, user. And this is how we do it. Scroll up, we say static types. That's gonna be a function that returns all of the different types, all right? So one of them is admin that's going to return an admin. So let's go ahead and import that. Another one of them is publisher. And so if type is equal to publisher, it's going to give us a publisher. And another one is super admin. So if it's equal to super admin, it's going to give us a super admin. There we go. Um, and do we need to add user as well? No, I think by default, it's just gonna build us a user if it doesn't have one of these types. All right, so let's go back here. Type is equal to publisher. So let's see if that actually worked for us. User.or, and then grab us the first user that comes through. Refresh the page. Ah, now the reason we get this error is because we have cycles in our dependency tree. Now I'm not going to go in depth as to why this error occurs because it's kind of a little bit complicated, but I'll add a link underneath this video explaining the problem for those of you that are interested in digging a little bit deeper. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and implement the solution to this problem just so we can press on with this video. So let's go ahead and fix that. We need to create a new file here in classes and we're going to call it user hierarchy. Oh, this is really hard to spell. There we go, user hierarchy.js, export all from dot slash user. All right, so inside of this class, we're basically just going to export all of our user related classes. We got user, publisher, admin, super admin. Publisher, 
admin. Super admin. And this is gonna be a little bit of work, guys, but I promise you it's totally worth it. Now, in all of our exports, we need to remove default. So instead of export default, we're just going to export it directly there. So there's user, jump into admin, and jump into publisher. And the other one we've got is super admin. Cool. And now what we need to do is when we import these classes, we have to go through user hierarchy.js. So this is kind of like, you can think of it as kind of like a pivot class. And if we import our user related classes through here, it's going to break the cycles and we won't get that error that we just had anymore. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start from the top class here and we need to import it like this. User hierarchy, I'm going to copy that, come into comments, there's another occurrence there. Uh, items, lists. Once again, I promise this is totally worth it for the functionality that you get. And I think you'll find that this actually make things, makes things a little bit cleaner as well. Here, here, there's another one there. So it's good you're learning about this now because um, it's kind of harder to solve this problem later on because you have to go through all of this work refactoring your code. Cool. Um, and actually we need to do the same thing with publisher, admin, and super admin. So let me just go ahead and quickly do that. Uh, now look, in this case, since we're importing admin, publisher, and super admin, we can do this, admin, publisher, super, Admin. So in that case, it's actually made our code quite a bit cleaner. So I like that. Having a look to see if we've got any more of those situations. Oh, the other one we'll have is in um, our super admin class. Yeah, so here we need to do it as well. Import admin from user hierarchy. Now next, all of these have to do with uh, our components that are being imported. And I think that's because of this. So if we go to app.view, Scroll down. Yeah, so we're gonna to have to remove a lot of these that we're importing. Just because users being imported the old way in those components. So I'm just gonna get rid of it for now. It's just easier. Uh, let's leave that one there. Come down here, uh, get rid of these two component imports. Ah, and in here we have to say dot slash classes slash user hierarchy. And it looks like the last place we need to fix this up is in the store. So let's jump into the store, uh, remove that, remove all of these, paste that in there, user, publisher, admin, super admin, nearly there guys and girls. And there we go, these can all be, um, these can all be left alone. And I think that'll be it for now. Oh, dot slash classes slash user hierarchy. All right, I think that's all the work we need to do to break the cycles. User is not defined in single table inheritance. So let's jump in there. Single table inheritance. Ah, okay, because I'm not importing user here. So let's go ahead and import user. But of course, we're going to have to do it the new way. Uh, dot, dot slash classes slash user hierarchy. All right, I think we're done. And there we go. So that's fixed all of the cycles now. So it was a little bit of work, but totally worth it. And here comes the fun part. We can start playing with all of this data. So let's come up here and I'm going to put in a div and I'm gonna put a div in that div. And then we'll say v-4 user in users. So we're gonna spit out all of the users here and set the key equal to the user's ID. And let's just spit out here the user's name. Uh, we have to say first name, that's right. And then let's put a H2 up there. And this is where we're going to display all of our users. Now I'll have to scroll down here and actually create that computed property. Users, return user.all. There we go, refresh the page. And now we're grabbing all of the users. In this case, it's just Aaron. Now let's go ahead and create an admin. So instead of an object there, let's just cut that, turn it into an array, whack the object in there, and create an admin. So this one's gonna have an ID of two, a first name of 
Luke, because I am the admin, and then a type that is equal to admin. There we go, save that. And now let's just grab the user with an ID of two. So find that user, and then we're going to try and use one of the admin functions. So if we go to admin, there we go, they can delete an account. So I'm gonna copy that, admin.find, and then see if we can run that delete account function. Refresh the page, and it works. However, if we change this to one, Aaron cannot delete an account. That's gonna throw an error, which is exactly what we want. How about a super admin? Let's go ahead and add one of those. And let's make Shannon a super admin. Super admin. Okay, and she's got an ID of three. And now super admin inherits from admin, and therefore a super admin should be able to call this function. Refresh the page and it works. However, a super admin can also delete a server. So let's see if that works. Nice, a super admin can delete the server. Normal admins should not be able to delete a server. So let's see if that works. Good, we get an error there, which is really cool. And now for my last trick, we're going to spit out all of these different users into their correct categories. And to do that, we'll say return publishers, publisher.or, and what else? Let's return all of the admins by saying admin.or, and last but not least, let's return all of the super admins by calling super admin dot or. This is so exciting, I love this stuff. And now we're going to have to import all of those, which is really easy now, we just add it to the list. Admin, publisher, super admin, and I believe that's it. So refresh the page, nice, that's all working. Now we come up here, we can copy and paste this. Let's do publishers first for each, and we'll just call all of them publisher. There we go, there's all of our publishers. Let's get all of the admins and all of the super admins. Man, I cannot get over how cool this is. I love this functionality. Admins, and then super admins. Super admin. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to change that to admin. There we go. I, I stuffed up the plurals there. And it works. How cool is that? So notice that in super admins, we only get Shannon, but Shannon also appears in admins because super admins is inheriting from admin. I honestly think that this is so cool and we're so lucky to have this functionality built into Vuke's ORM. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I really did enjoy making this video and playing around with this stuff. And as I mentioned, I didn't know before that you could keep extending and extending classes like we've done here with admins and super admins. So that's really cool. Um, and you're lucky to, enough to have learned that. So thank you so much for watching. Now that we've covered just about everything in the series, I'm going to start teaching you some of my favorite patterns using Vuke's ORM. Because it turns out that there's a few tricks that you can learn around Vuke's ORM that make your life so much easier and make your code so much more beautiful and cleaner. Actually, I'm just gonna give you a quick teaser right now. So one of my favorite patterns is to be able to do something like this. User dot dollar sign create. And I've got this thing where whenever I have a dollar sign beforehand, that means that this is gonna be like a network request. And then I can just pass through a form, right, with all of my user details, and that is going to create the user. So with that line of code, I'm doing everything I need to create that user. And then it'll return a promise, so I can then say like dot then, or you can use async await if you'd rather do that. But you can say dot then, and then do something with the response, right? So the code is so beautiful, so clean, and I love writing code in this way. Uh, it's, it gives me this wonderful API. All right, I'll see you in the next video. I can't wait to share more of this stuff with all of you guys and girls. Stay tuned for more Vuke's ORM magic.